Hey there, everyone. Mike Maybach with KTVU Fox 2 in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, for the next 10, 15 minutes, we're focused in on gyms. We're focused in on fitness. Uh, when are they going to open it up? When they do open up, what they're going to look like? Do you even want to go? Are you, are you nervous to go? So uh, to talk about this, uh, we've got two great guests right now. Francesca Schuler, who is the CEO of InShape uh, Health Clubs, and Jolt Jakovic, the president of Fitness SF. Thank you both for taking the time to uh, join me for this. Thanks for having Thank us. You. So I think I was in the gym maybe the day before. I'm a member of Fitness SF uh, in the Bay Area, and uh, it, was, it was shut down the next day. Um, that changed my life because I go to the gym four or five times a day. That's my outlet. That's where I release all my stress. It's just part of my life. And Francesca, I'll start with you. Take me back to when uh, that moment when you guys had to decide, look, we, we do need to shut these down right now. Uh, well, it was an abrupt um, but moment for all of us, uh, but obviously the right decision. I think one of the things about health and fitness is that we are concerned with health and fitness. So it became clear that for safety reasons, that was the right thing to do to flatten the curve. So uh, we closed our doors quickly. Um, it subsequently led, as we saw this was going to last longer, to some very you know tough decisions around temporary layoffs of team members, et cetera. Yeah. And a quick kind of pivot to providing as much as we could online and in different ways to our members, because most of our members are like you. Uh, they go to our clubs every day or, or often, and it's not just because of the equipment, but it's the motivation in the community that gets them there. It gets you out of bed. I always say our biggest competitor is our snooze alarm. So, um, so it's been challenging, but we've tried to work through it and support our members as best we can. And obviously, safety and health of our members is the number one priority, so completely aligned with the decision. But now looking forward to figuring out how we can reopen our doors and get everybody back. Hey, Joel, what about for you? I mean, uh, did you think we'd be, you know, here we are mid-May uh, and that these gyms would still be closed? Looking back on it back in early March, mid-March? Absolutely not. Um, I was surprised. And, 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 and like Francesca mentioned, it was a kind of an abrupt closing where they had that press conference on that Monday afternoon on March 16th. And by that evening, we were closed, and we had to close all eight of our locations, six in San Francisco, one in Marin, one in Oakland. And the longest we've ever been closed was in Marin in 1998 when we, were, when we had a flood for six days. And I, and I thought six days was a long time. Yeah. And uh, this, this is uh, uh, much longer than six days. Uh, but, but, I, but like Francesca, I, I, I agree that I think it was the right decision at that time. Right. There was a lot of unknowns about it. Uh, uh, there was a safety issue, uh, a health concern. And uh, so that was the top priority. Let me ask you about your employees. I mean, have you guys had a chance to talk to them and, and how many specifically have been impacted uh, for both of you? Go ahead, uh, Joel, with that one. Sure, yeah. I mean, we, uh, we uh, you know, initially uh, we had to furlough uh, a vast majority, about 95%, about 400 employees. Uh, we still have retained the uh, general managers and the facility managers. The facility managers are working on the locations and improving them as we speak. Right. Um, and uh, but yeah, it's been it's been a huge impact. Yeah, Frank, uh, that's got a huge financial impact too. I can imagine. Yeah, so you know, all of us went from revenue to zero revenue overnight because obviously we're not charging dues if we're closed. Um, so it's a that is a, a first for all of us in our leadership books to go from revenue to zero revenue. So similar, we made the same decision actually. We um, had to temporarily let go about 96% of our team, but we also kept general managers and a club technician for each club, uh, as well as some of our support team, mainly to really make sure we're working vigorously on all our reopening strategies. So when we're ready to open, we can hit go right away. Um, We've kept in touch with our team members. That's part of the, the impetus for the California Fitness Alliance, which I'm sure we'll chat about. Uh, so let them know what we're doing, keeping them posted. We stay connected to them and hope to be bringing a lot of them back yeah. uh, you know, when we do reopen. Um, but it's been really challenging and hard on that front, on the people front. You know, there's the, we are a, a team and people-based business um, in fitness, so it's been challenging. Ever since I've been going to gyms, and, and this is basically since the high school days, um, you know, I've been a dedicated member to this particular gym, you know, and, and every now and then I'll go buy a 24 hour fitness, a Bay club. And I can't say that I haven't peeked inside and you look around. Um, but it was very much, you know, competition at its mm -hmm. best between this gym and that gym. And, 
but you mentioned this California Fitness Alliance. It does seem by creating this alliance, and, and Francesca, I'll have you just talk a little bit about it, uh, about where this started, both of you. Um, but it seems like it's all for one, one for all, that like you're all coming together now as, as not competitors, but as one team as we move forward out of this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. So the California Fitness Alliance was founded by a, a group of operators, including both Zoltz and myself, as well as operators throughout the state of California, clubs and studios, mm -hmm. um, really with the intent of kind of three things. One is how do we set some great consistent standards to reopen? safely together, um, then how do we think about relief for the industry? And then how do we think about recovery down the road? How do we get, we know there's gonna be a lot of people who have struggled being at home, both mentally and physically, whether they were members of clubs or not before. So how do we help them get back into a more active lifestyle once this, once it's safe to do so? Um, so, you know, it's interesting, historically the fitness business has been really competitive to your point. And I think one of the silver linings of this is that we've realized that um, we're so much stronger if we work together. We have the same values, right? We're all here to help people get healthy and fit. And so it's given a way for our members, our team members, our communities, as well as operators to find a voice and really advocate for um, reopening the industry when it's um, safe to do so and to do it in a consistent way. I mean, our goal is to make sure that the standards are high and that we work with our officials to define those standards in a safe way. Joel, was there any debate internally within uh, Fitness SF about whether or not we should join this alliance? Absolutely not. Uh, basically, you know, we're all in different boats, but in, in the same storm. I mean, we're all trying to get this, uh, get this, get through this together. Uh, like Francesca mentioned, it's the most, most important if we share best practices, um, have a consistent plan. So when we open, we stay open. Uh, yeah. The last thing we'd like to do is at, is open and then have to close, you know, later down the line. I mean, that may be the case, but we, we want to try to avoid that possibility. So although we might have all different type of boats, we're, we're still trying to, you know, fight the storm. All, you know, we're, we're, we're still in this. We're all in the eye of the, the storm. All, okay. all of us, so. <clears throat> Let me ask you, let's get into reopening. What's it going to look like? And, and uh, I'll start with my own gym, Fitness SF. Um, it's a smaller gym, you know, the bikes are on top of each other. When I last left them, the treadmills were on top of each other, which is fine. You know, I, I didn't mind it, but now as we look forward, what, what's going to look different and, and maybe the one, two things that are going to be the biggest changes? Well, I think, you know, we're going to have a, we have a reservation system so we could, so we could keep, uh, we can manage capacity. Uh, we're also going to be having a camera system that's going to be monitoring uh, fevers because that's one of the biggest indicators of, of somebody being sick or potentially even being infected with the, the COVID virus. Uh, so that's going to be a big change. Uh, we are going to be, we're all currently working on um, adding more functional space to the gyms uh, and more open space. There, there will be equipment that will not be able to be used. We're going to have the uh, physical distancing. Uh, we're going to have the signage to to uh, instruct people how to you know navigate that. Uh, but yeah, it, it is going to be quite different. But like like yourself, there's probably going to be a lot of people that are going to be eager to get back and and really can't wait to get back. So when you go to the reservation system, like look, I, I usually go between two in the afternoon and three afternoon. So I would have to sign up like every day for that, or would it be like a monthly thing that I go? This is my time and see if that works for me. For me, uh, right now. Right now, we're trying to do a, a daily thing and seeing how that's going to work out. Uh, yeah, you'd basically either pick a, a one hour or two hour block, um, and uh, that would basically reserve a spot. And and again, we're we're trying to base the guidelines on you know incomplete information. We don't know what the guidelines are going to be for the state of California, for Marin County, for San Francisco County, for Alameda County. So we're just assuming things based on what other states are doing what other parts of California are doing. So we're kind of, in some, some ways, kind of guessing what those guidelines are gonna be and then working around procedures around those. But you know, those, those may be stricter or they may be uh, um, not as strict. We don't know yet, so. Francesca, what about you guys? I mean, is this um, all on the same page? Does this sound familiar, the reservations, the so forth? Yep. So yeah, we'll do reservations. You know, we'll obviously have PPE for team members and encourage members to do it as well. Masks, gloves, 
Um, look, you know, we've always been focused on high standards of cleaning, as I know Fitness SF has as well. We've obviously uh, ratcheted those up as well. We've explored the best technologies, frequency, continuous cleaning during the time that we're there as well after hours. So the, the big things are really physical distancing that we know is the most important thing. So I think we've all reorganized our space, whether that's through signage, pulling equipment out to allow for physical distancing and to manage capacity, as well as things like masks for team members, um, screenings before you come in, asking people similar to grocery stores, where if you're exhibiting these symptoms, please don't come today, et cetera. And so, um, you know, I think we, the advantage we have since we're one of not open yet is we are learning from all the states that have opened. Um, we've actually spent a fair amount of time, as I mentioned, with uh, a company in China who's been open for about a month and a half, learning their best practices. So, you know, really making sure that we follow the guidelines from CDC, from other best practices, what other categories are doing. And as Zold said, we're going to align with whatever the standards are. I think we're preparing for the most extreme and make sure that we're as safe as possible. And then whatever the decisions are, we'll be able to open with those. I mean, you guys have taken a huge financial hit. There's, there's no doubt about that. Is the, this new alliance, the CFA, um, California Fitness Alliance, are, are you guys coming together to go after federal aid, to go after state aid to help you? Because you may reopen, but I don't know who's going to actually show up. And, that, and that's also probably a concern financially. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question around um, in terms of who will show up. I think the philosophy we're all taking is we will be ready when you are. So when you're ready to come back, we will have all the standards in place. I think there is a group of people similar to you who cannot wait. We all get emails every day and on our social media, like, please, please open, please open today. And then there will be people who may have health issues, et cetera, who will be more cautious. And that's okay. You know, we're here to uh, help when we can. Um, at, our first goal is reopening, um, but absolutely trying to get relief for um, all fitness organizations who've been impacted, I mean, small mom and pop studios, you can imagine they're devastated. Uh, that is all their business. It's been brutal for us as well, uh, as well as for our team members who've been, you know, unemployed for this time. Fortunately, the CARES package helped to cover them, which was great, but we want to make sure we have on ongoing relief. So that is absolutely part of the Alliance's goal is to provide relief for the industry. You're with that too, Zol. You're going after some extra funds? Yeah, we, we've, we've applied for the PPP and also received it, yeah. but you know, we're, we're a family business. So, uh, we, we, we are internally financed. So yeah, this is, has been a extremely devastating blow financially, but you know, being an entrepreneur for 30 years, uh, one is I'm optimistic mm -hmm. and two, uh, is that, uh, is that you have to be, be flexible and be able to adapt, uh, we will, you know, we will adapt. We'll adapt to this new different conditions and we won't just survive, we will thrive. And we believe that they will, there's a huge pent up demand because if anything that this pandemic has shown is that health is, 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 is the most important factor. And that's, that, that is, is gonna be paramount. And, and I think that's gonna be more on top of mind for people. Uh, you know, Amazon box, another Amazon box with another material possession. I think that's gonna have a little, little value, but real health and wellness, uh, that's priceless. And I think actually demand will, for our product will actually, I think maybe in the short run, there'll be, you know, people that'll be a little <laughs> concerned, but I think in the long run, you'll see a tremendous growth in demand actually for our product. Yeah, I'm wondering, it may get to the point, and I don't know, I'm just thinking of my gym and possible knocking down walls, but do you think that some of these gyms, uh, not just your own, will have to, to expand uh, eventually? And I know it's hard to think about that and spending money to do that, but to, to make the gyms larger, so if we do continue social distancing in the, in the years ahead, that that's a possibility? Absolutely, it is a possibility. We're repurposing uh, group exercise studios as we speak. Uh, we're transitioning some spaces right now. We're going to have a lot more functional space, a lot more open space. Uh, we're definitely, uh, like I said, what we've done in the last 30 years is we've, we've adapted and we've been flexible. And obviously, you know, the tough part of this situation is there's no playbook. We, in my lifetime, I've never experienced this. Uh, in, in all my years in business, I've never experienced uh, the, the degree of having all our locations shut down. And like Francesca said, it's one thing if you have a drop in revenue 10%, but 
20%, 30%. Okay, you could, you could weather those, but 100% drop and for an extended period of time, that's, that's pretty significant. But I, I'm very, like I said, I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm confident we will, not only, we will not only survive, but our industry will thrive. And I think there's going to be a great focus on health and wellness in the future. Well, I think an important, Francesca, the importance is, is really coming together as a team and what you're doing with this alliance. I mean, because it may be different if you guys are on your own. Maybe you don't survive. 100%. I, I'm also an optimist, so totally agree. I think for us, this will, um, there will be new things. I mean, one of the advantages we have in California, I think you're going to see us all doing innovative things outside as well, taking some of the classes and things that used to do inside, we'll take those outside. So I think the industry is definitely going to thrive as well. And, and um, you know, and we're committed to, you know, having our communities be healthy. And so one of the things I've definitely learned is that um, everyone is keeping health more top of mind, like Zold said, not everyone knows how to do it. And that's kind of what we know how to do. So the partnership in that with our county leaders and our mayors, uh, I've been in a lot of conversations recently with boards of supervisors, and it's been a great collaboration because we each bring something to the table. Good. And we're um, the next time a pandemic hits, which hopefully will never happen, hopefully all of us will be even healthier than we are today, which I think will help it be less of an impact. Honestly, I think it is. I agree with Zolt. So many of the people who unfortunately suffered from COVID uh, weren't as healthy going into it, and we want to you know, improve that. For sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm tired of doing sit-ups and push-ups. So I want to get into a gym and get those free weights going. And uh, I'm tired of running because I was never a runner. So I want to get on that bike again, the stationary bike. So uh, I'm with you guys. And I appreciate all the efforts you're doing to, to get these facilities up and running because uh, health is uh, first and foremost a priority for everyone. It should be right now. So I just want to take time to remind our viewers right now that uh, they can watch this interview and all interviews tied to COVID-19 on our 24-7 stream. It's called coronavirusnow.com. Uh, and hey, Francesca, Zolt, thank you very much and uh, stay safe and, and we, I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having us and we'll see you at a workout, hopefully soon. I'll be there. <laughs>